Members of the Garrison Headquarters Command Battalion were at Camp Frederick, Maryland this week for some training. I'll have more on that in a moment. Also this week, Meade High makes it to the state championship. The Army Staff Senior Warrant Officer visits Fort Meade. And there's a technical job fair coming up. These stories and more. But first, a reminder from the Visitors Control Center and the Fort Meade Directorate of Emergency Services. Starting April 4th, new procedures for accessing Fort Meade will go into effect. Starting April 4th, the VCC will be open from 7.30 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Friday. Anyone without a DOD-issued ID card will have to get a Fort Meade access pass from the Visitor Control Center at the Reese Road Gate. Frequent or long-term visitors are encouraged to pre-register at the VCC. All of these measures are designed to bring Fort Meade into line with Army and DOD standards worldwide. Over the next several weeks, the Public Affairs Office will continue to publish more information on access control procedures. The Garrison is hosting a town hall meeting on the subject on Thursday, March 24th at 6 p.m. in the Post Theater. For details, you can contact the Visitors Control Center at 301-677-1064 or 1065. In other news, Army Staff Senior Warrant Officer David Williams visited Fort Meade this week. The Army Staff Senior Warrant Officer post was established by Chief of Staff General Odierno in 2014. The position provides the Chief of Staff with subject matter expertise on Warrant Officer training, education, and professional experience. I uh, go out, I talk to Warrant Officers, I talk to senior leaders, uh, and that includes all cohorts, NCOs, Warrant Officers, O grade, especially at the command level, battalion commanders, company commanders, to make sure our warrant officers are performing uh, the way the Army expect them to, and uh, not just uh, you know performances as far as um, uh, technical performance, but primarily technical performance, but behavior. Make sure we're, we're assessing the right non commission officer to become warrant officers, and if there are some challenges that we need to address, if I uh, after talking to different groups, if I. Uh, come upon any challenges that we have that need to be addressed on top, bring them back to the Army staff and let the Army staff know, uh, hey, this, these are some of the challenges, and then provide recommendations to any challenges. Warrant officers, according to GoArmy.com, are the technical foundation of the U.S. Army, specializing in areas like intelligence, aviation, and military police. I think the boss uh, at that time, uh, General Odierno, wanted to make sure that we were doing the right things for our warrant officers. We wanted to make sure that our warrant officers were professionally educated properly and making sure that we remain our technical expertise. Elsewhere, on a day-to-day -day basis, members of the Fort Meade Garrison Headquarters Command Battalion are busy providing service to 119 different commands and units that call Fort Meade home. Finding time for training can be difficult. Over the last year, the Headquarters Battalion has used the National Guard training facility at Camp Frederick, Maryland. That's part of the reason we're out here at a National Guard training site. They're kind enough to you know, allow us to work some of these sites and for Sergeant Blue Baker out here work closely with us to make sure that we get our uh, people certified on the different pieces of equipment and stuff out here that we have to do. Everybody has warrior skills training that they're supposed to conduct. Obviously, it's kind of up to the commanders to prioritize this, and the company commanders and the battalion commander got together, uh, prioritized some of those tasks, and we came up with four basic lanes that we're going to do here to, to test those. So. This week, the battalion trained on small weapons, first aid, and convoy simulation. Major Schoenfeld says they'd like to do more. Try to do some sort of training like this. Uh, twice a year. I mean, ideally, we'd like to do it more than that, but realistically, we know we can't because the soldiers all have garrison day-to-day -day, uh, missions and tasks that they have to do. So take time out of the SJA's office, take time out of the RSO's office, and then obviously, you know, the MPs have the day-to-day -day road tasks as well. Camp Frederick is located near Reiserstown, Maryland, about 10 miles north of Baltimore. In sports news, last weekend the Meade Senior High boys basketball team attempted to defend their state 4A title from a year ago. However, it just wasn't meant to be this year as the Mustangs fell to Greenbelt's Eleanor Roosevelt High 72-39 Saturday in College Park. Although the result is disappointing, after the game, Meade High coach Pete Corriero said that making it to the state championship two years in a row is an amazing accomplishment. Last year's championship was the first state championship in any sport for Meade High and the first Anne Arundel County team to win a state title since 1990. One final reminder from MWR, Club Meade is hosting a technical job fair on Wednesday, March 23rd from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. The fair, also sponsored by county and state employment organizations, features dozens of prospective employers in technical career fields. Everyone's welcome to attend, however, anyone without a DOD ID card must follow the signs to the Visitors Control Center to gain access to the installation. And that's all for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office, have a great Mead week. The power of one small action, one conversation, or one phone call can make a difference in the life of a veteran going through a difficult time. For free 24-7 confidential support, call the Veterans Crisis Line or the Military Crisis Line.